Hello and welcome back to WWE 2K20. We are here at Champion of Champions, or Night of Champions, the uh, newest pay-per-view that we've added. And it will determine who is the top champion of all champions. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the first match. Alright, and the first matchup here tonight will be Xavier Woods versus Kane, the Big Red Machine, trying to prove that he is the one that can use the magical powers that he uh, <laughs> he showed off at Money in the Bank. So he'll be facing off against Kane, one-on-one, uh, -on -one in just a regular match, not extreme rules or anything. But we do have quite the lineup of matches here tonight. Uh, also tonight we have the Rock taking on The Undertaker, as The Rock is pretty pissed about uh, how he lost the match, and uh, he's pissed that The Undertaker has the Money in the Bank briefcase, and that uh, Undertaker can just cash in at any time. So, um, anyways, so it'll be The Rock versus Undertaker, and it was versus Kane first, and then it'll be Triple H versus Drew McIntyre as Drew McIntyre tries to make his way back up to um, getting a uh, opportunity to regain his Universal Championship. And then also later on tonight we do have the NXT Tag Champions defending their titles against the Lucha House Party as they had won it from the Lucha House Party. The Lucha House Party are wanting to use their rematch clause to try and earn the titles back. Um, and then, right before the main event, is Daniel Bryan versus Apollo Crews in an Extreme Rules match. Also, another stipulation for Drew McIntyre versus Triple H, it is a knockout match. So the only way to win is to knock out your opponent. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this first match. Xavier Woods versus Kane. Kane right out of the gate with a few slaps to Xavier. Xavier's still not down on the ground quite yet. Manages to reverse whatever Kane was going for and hit him with a Russian leg sweep. Taking down the monster instantly. And what is Xavier looking for here? Another Russian leg sweep. And he's pretty much evened up the match. A kick to the gut and an uppercut. And uh, he went for something there, but Kane easily shoved him out of the way and rolls him down to the mat and hits him with a double drop kick from that big of a man must hurt and just to kick out before one came the big takedown spine buster almost picks him back up to his feet going for something but Xavier gets out of it kicks him in the gut and does a front flip neck breaker on the beast or the on the monster, not the beast. The beast would be Brock Lesnar, which we still have not seen. Kick to the gut. And another front flip. Uh, neck breaker from Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods trying everything he possibly can to take down the big red machine. He's got him in a submission. Is he going to be able to tap out the big red machine? No. Kane manages to get out of it and drop Xavier Woods straight down the that. Xavier Woods wearing an attire that is set for Extreme Rules. Advertising the next pay-per-view that we will be having next month. Um, that is Extreme Rules. He kicks out of uh, the pin. Not even a one count from Kane. Kane with a big punch and a kick to the back of Xavier Woods. Kane really trying to get back into this matchup. And Xavier with a huge hip toss onto the big man himself. Kane slow to get back up to his feet. He's in the corner. A few strikes from Xavier Woods and now Woods is going up top into a hurricane TDT. And it picks him back up to his feet. And a double drop kick does not connect as Kane takes over the match once again. No. Xavier Woods went for what looked like a right hook. Didn't connect. Big boot from the monster. And uh, Xavier could be in trouble here. 
elbow doesn't connect. Xavier has a signature saved up. He's not able to pull it off. He kips up. Kane with another takedown. Big slam into the center of the ring. Big right hand knocks out Xavier Woods. Xavier is in trouble here. As Kane is desperately trying to catch up in this matchup here on Night of Champions, Clash of Champions, Champion of Champions, whatever you prefer. He goes from pin one to kick out at one. Big Woods, if he can get back up to his feet in time, he can pull off the signature. Ah, uh, no. He's yet again picked up, this time in a submission. Kane's trying to tap out the competitor. Manages to get a few elbow strikes in to break the hold of Kane. A big clap across the ears. And Kane again with a belly to belly this time. But Xavier Woods has a finish. If he can pull off the finish. Oh, he's sent down to the mat. Kane picking him back up. Kane has a finish now. Going for the submission. Trying to crush the head of Xavier Woods. Is Xavier going to tap out? And Xavier is not even tapping out. Xavier's just put down. Kane managing to take down Xavier Woods. Not even tapping him out, just putting him to sleep. Unfortunately for Xavier Woods, that means it's back to the grind again. He did manage to make it to a Money in the Bank ladder match, so that is pretty good highlight for him, but unfortunately he wasn't able to break the briefcase and now he's not been able to eat the monster cane, unfortunately for him. Yeah, he doesn't even tap out there, he's just put straight to sleep as Kane has overcome Xavier Woods. Let's get into the next match here on United Champions. And now back to Champion of Champions. Um, unfortunately, I witnessed the crash of the game because the game's a piece of shit. Uh, regardless, um, it is out first Triple H facing off against Drew McIntyre in a knockout match. The only way to win is by knocking out your opponent. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into this matchup. Here is Triple H and we'll be bringing out Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre not impressed with the new GM, the new GM being Triple H, who told Drew McIntyre that in order to get his rematch clause, he would have to fight three other men, which he lost and got pinned by The Rock, which Drew McIntyre thinks is very unfair for his rematch clause. Therefore, he'll be facing off against Triple H here tonight in a knockout match. So let's go ahead and bring him out. And he is a former Universal Champion, losing it immediately in his first defense to Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman now the current Universal Champion, and the one that is going into the Champion of Champions matchup here tonight. The six-man elimination match, and it will determine who is the true champion of all champions. It will include... Braun Strowman, The Miz, Kevin Owens, Tomasa Ciampa, Ryan Trechikov, and Jeff Hardy. And uh, the winner of that match will obviously become the champion of all champions. And uh, it will replace their current title until they lose said championship. And then the winner will revert the title back to the uh, original championship, whatever championship may have been. Anyways, there's Drew McIntyre. And now let's go ahead and get this match underway. And yeah, for my custom arena, I kind of mixed Clash of Champions and Night of Champions, because there wasn't all the options for both of them. So, anyways, Drew McIntyre right out of the gate uh, into some technical wrestling with Triple H. Got him with a big takedown. Triple H managing to get out of that, roll around uh, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre now has Triple H in the corner in a headlock. Again, the only way to win this match is by knocking out your opponent. 
So no pins, no submissions, no countouts, no disqualifications. The only way to win is to knock your opponent out cold. And that can be any move. You can hit him with a big right hand and knock him out so cold that he just gives up and the match is over. It is to replace the last man standing match. Um, like the actual match type itself. As we witnessed that that can be quite a boring match. As Randy Orton and Samoa Joe showed off that all you have to do is just keep hitting your opponent down until they don't get back up. Where this, you actually have to knock them out completely. There's no 10 count. It's just if they're knocked out, they're done. And I thought for a second Drew McIntyre might be done there, but he was not. Triple H having the upper hand here, putting McIntyre into the corner of the ring and hitting with several strikes across the face. Landing him on the bottom turnbuckle and pinning him against the bottom turnbuckle with a knee. Picking him back up to his feet. And a big straight right jab from Triple H, the general manager. Another right jab. And McIntyre could be in trouble here. No, he manages to hit him with a bridge suplex. And now McIntyre is in control. Big clothesline lays out Triple H. And he picks him back up to his feet. Triple H. Could be in trouble here. Oh. Oh my god, almost threw him out of the ring. Triple H almost just ate shit. Almost got launched all the way out of the arena. And Triple H with a Russian leg sweep. And McIntyre hard, hardly standing right now. Again, he could be knocked out at any point in time. This powerbomb could knock him out. Anything that hits him in the head hard enough to knock him out cold could end the match. McIntyre's head is in yellow damage now. And Triple H really, really trying his hardest to knock out the, the uh, opponent. Targeting the head, obviously, is that is probably where you'll have to strike them to knock them out. Uh, that, or with a suplex or a powerbomb or a slam of some sort. McIntyre getting back into the match, an arm drag, picks him up into a suplex, just slams him down, doesn't even fall with him, stomp on the head of Triple H. Triple H could be in trouble here. Big set out powerbomb by Drew McIntyre. McIntyre trying desperately to get his rematch clause back in order to have a rematch against Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Big boot! By Drew McIntyre, lays out Triple H. Triple H could be in trouble here. A few gut shots and head shots uh, from McIntyre, the challenger. And, oh, big pile driver. I keep saying big before everything. It's getting annoying for me and probably you, too. Oh, God. Almost threw him over the top ropes again. And Triple H, I having to roll out of the ring and into the uh, outside of the ring and now Drew McIntyre getting back at him but not being able to do anything as Triple H has taken control again Triple H has a signature saved up is he going to be able to hit McIntyre with the spine buster rolls him into the ring instead thought he was going to do it on the outside could have been very devastating if he hit the stairs with him. Nope. He manages to hit him with a suplex. A big suplex. That's the last one, I swear. Picking McIntyre back up to his feet. Oh! Clap in the ears of Triple H. And now McIntyre in the lead here. A headbutt to knock down Triple H. Is he going to... Which one is he going to go for? Ooh, drops him into a gut buster on his knee. Is he going to go for the finish? Ooh. Triple H smartly rolling out of the ring. Good ring awareness there. Uh, Triple H, the GM, the king, the king of kings. And big right hand. Oh, damn it, I've done it again. Uh, McIntyre 
McIntyre going up top for a superplex. And he manages to pull off the superplex, a stalling superplex at that. Slamming Triple H into the center of the ring. Triple H could be in trouble here. If McIntyre is able to pull off his kick, he could knock out Triple H, ending the matchup. Big stomp to the head of uh, Triple H. Triple H originally was in full control of this match. Another sit-out uh, pile driver by Drew McIntyre. Drew rolling out of the ring to follow Triple H. Big clothesline. God damn it, I keep doing it. Picks him back up to his feet and rolls him back into the ring once again. Drew McIntyre trying desperately to find any way possible to uh, be able to knock out the opponent. And Triple H is leaving the building. <laughs> uh, nope, he's going for a weapon. He's going for his signature sledgehammer. Oh, and he hits Drew McIntyre with it. McIntyre back up to his feet. Right hook to Triple H. Went for another right hook, doesn't connect. Snake Eyes in the corner busts open the head of McIntyre. I thought McIntyre might have been done for there. Spinebuster. Lays out McIntyre once again. Is this going to be enough to put him down for good? If he's able to pull off the finish here, he could potentially knock out McIntyre, ending the match here on Night of Champions, Clash of Champions, whatever. Oh, and he does it on top of the sledgehammer for the win to knock him out. Triple H has beaten Drew McIntyre in the first knockout match we've seen ever. Spinebuster was almost the end of it there. And finally, Triple H put down Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre probably won't be seeing a Universal Championship match anytime soon. Let's go ahead and get into the next match. And now the third match of the Champion of Champions pay-per-view is The Undertaker versus The Rock. The electrifying one faced off against Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Unfortunately, he was not able to beat him. He was beaten down brutally with a chair and uh, lost in a disqualification to Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman obviously getting the chair from uh, Bray Wyatt. And then The Undertaker came out, choke slammed Braun Strowman in the center of the ring and taunted to the rest of the crowd. And so The Rock is pretty angry at everyone right now. And he's facing off against The Undertaker because he doesn't feel like The Undertaker deserves the Money in the Bank briefcase. Unfortunately for him, he can't change the fact that The Undertaker has a briefcase. The Undertaker at any time can come out and just take down uh, the Universal Champion and win the Universal title. But The Rock uh, is trying to trying to beat The Undertaker to prove that he should have won the Money in the Bank, not The Undertaker, despite the fact that The Undertaker won it fair and square. Regardless, let's go ahead and bring out The Undertaker, the dead man himself. This match underway. There he is, the dead man. His throne. He is making his way down to the ring. And really, he could win the championship tonight. After the six man elimination match for the uh, Champion of Champions title, The Undertaker could cash in on Braun Strowman if Braun Strowman's pinned. He can cash in on Braun Strowman and take away the Universal Championship. Hell, he could cash in on Braun Strowman during the match, and it could be two matches at once. The Undertaker versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship, and the Champion of Champions match. In which case, if The Undertaker were able to pin Braun Strowman, he would then be put into the match automatically. Could be one 
interesting storyline. I just hit my mic again. Sorry. That could be one interesting storyline of having Taker win the Universal Championship during the Champion of Champions match. And then he could win the Champion of Champions match at the exact same time. So, uh... Or we could also see Braun Strowman win the Champion of Champions match and get pinned by The Undertaker, and then there is no Champion of Champions. It just goes back to the Universal title. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this first match. Enough, enough stipulations, or uh, not stipulations, I'm stupid. Enough uh, theories and stuff. Let's go ahead and get into the hardcore wrestling. As The Rock takes on The Undertaker, straight into a DDT by The Rock. And he goes for a pin right off the gates. Not even a one count. And a big overhead strike. Oh, damn it, I'm doing it again. Oh! Right hook takes down The Taker. Taker going for something, but Rock reverses that again into a Russian leg sweep. Rock really taking on Taker right now. Hasn't taken any damage at all. And now he's going for a belly to belly. Slams the Undertaker straight down on the mat. And then, ooh, it was, I couldn't tell if that was a knee drop or an elbow drop, but it was one of the two. And, uh, the People's, the People's Champion, who isn't actually a champion, taking on the dead man could be a Wrestlemania main event match but it's just the third match of all of the matches we have here tonight The Undertaker being able to get out of the submission and finally getting some offense in going for a pen right out of the gate and The Rock hasn't even been hit once so I'm not sure why he went for a pen there elbow to the side of the head of Taker and The Rock hits his signature Spine Buster on The Undertaker. He goes for the pin. One, two, kick out of two. This could be one of the quickest matches we've seen. This isn't a squash match, but The Rock could just squash The Undertaker. He's getting ready. And he picks him up for the rock bottom. Hits the rock bottom, and he goes for the pin. Is it going to be enough to put away Taker? One, two, kick out of two and a half. I thought it was over for a second. The Rock still has not been hit once in this matchup. Being much faster than The Undertaker and being able to take down The Taker relatively quickly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's in trouble now. And now The Undertaker has gotten his offense back. He goes for 10 again. I'm not sure why. Kick out at 1. Undertaker goes for something, reversed into a clothesline by The Rock. The Rock has an answer to everything right now. Another Russian leg sweep. The Undertaker appeared behind him, and yet The Rock still managed to get out of it. Oh, and a big Samoan drop from The Rock. And that one was a big move, because The Undertaker is quite a big man. Kick out at two. Undertaker back up to his feet. He went to taunt, and it was <laughs> not a very good idea as uh, The Rock got out of it. Taker, though, finally managing to make a bit of a comeback. Is he going to be able to pull off a comeback move? Ooh, no, he does reverse The Rock's belly to belly, though. And he doesn't have enough time, but he does have a signature saved up. He could hit him with a choke slam at any time in the matchup. And is he going to try and submit him? I don't see what The Undertaker is going for here. Got him in a headlock, but The Rock manages to fight his way out of it. You've got shots from the elbows of the people. The people's elbows. Well, no, that's that's an actual move in people's elbow, but no. Now, uh, Taker again on the defensive. As The Rock takes control once more. What's he going for here? Snake Eyes in the corner. Getting close. 
He is getting close to a uh, signature once again. The Undertaker reverses the Rock. The Rock reverses the Undertaker. The Taker has sat up. That spells disaster for the Rock. Holy hell, he threw the Rock high. And he hits him with a pile driver. And he goes for the pin. Is this one over? Is it going to be enough to put away the Electra? Flying one. Two count. The Rock kicks out of the Tombstone pile driver. He is forced to roll out of the ring, though. Undertaker short to follow. Goes for a clothesline. And uh, the Rock ducked the first one. Didn't manage to duck the second one. The Undertaker decided it was a good time to taunt again. The Rock proving to him it was not. And now the Rock getting all fired up. He's got a second. What the fuck? <laughs> I think we just saw the Rock bend in ways he's not supposed to bend. And now uh, he slammed the Undertaker's hand against the uh, steel steps. That could spell disaster if the Undertaker is trying to. Oh, never mind. He manages to push the Rock into the steps. I was going to say it could spell disaster if he gets injured. Uh, if he is going to try and go for the Universal Championship tonight. Right hook. Almost knocked out the dead man. The dead man almost the knocked out man. <laughs> yep, the knocked out man. <laughs> he does manage to get back up to his feet. Kick him in the gut and pull off a DDT. Rock kipped up immediately. Slung into the ropes. I don't even know what that was, but it was a big move from the Undertaker. Taker could have it here if he's able to stay on this offense. Back suplex. Dropping the rock straight down onto his back, and he goes for the pin. Is it going to be enough to pin the electrifying one? No. Kick out a one. Voice crack there. Not very good by the commentator. The commentator should quit now. Give up his life and uh, face the death penalty for that voice crack in the middle of a big segment. And a suplex from the rock onto Taker. He could pull out the signature here and have two finishers. He does. He pulls out the spine buster. Goes for the pen. One, two, three. Spine buster puts away the Undertaker, the dead man, the pinned man, the not the champion man. <laughs> Several different ways of calling it. But the Undertaker has failed to do anything tonight. Is that the only clip? One, two, nope, okay, okay. That was the spine buster at the very beginning. The rock bottom followed that. Undertaker able to kick out of both of them. Taker almost had the rock when he hit him with a tombstone pile driver. And then the rock unfortunately did manage to kick out of it. And unfortunately for the Undertaker, he hit another spine buster and managed to put Taker away at Champion of Champions. And again, I am still thinking about making this a weekly show. Comment down below if you think I should or not. Anyway, let's get into the next match. And now for the Tag Team Championship match for NXT. Now first is the Lucha House Party. They are the ones challenging uh, the tag champions, the current tag champions. The team of Crow and Barnett uh, who are part of the three-man group with Gavin Henderson. Gavin Henderson not being in a match tonight. Also not ringside for some reason. Now uh, that reason being uh, I've already had the game crash twice now, so... <laughs> I don't want it to crash again, so I'm going to put as few custom superstars as possible in the uh, in the event that it does manage to crash itself. Here are the tag champions, Crow and Barnett, two of the biggest men in the WWE. Again, Crow's uh, jacket is not working very well. Um, he seems to be attached by some strings. Is he somebody's puppet? Is he a puppet? We'll have to find out in the days to come as Kalisto just fused into the ring. 
<laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and get this already messed up match underway. We face off the two biggest teams in NXT so far. Tag champions, Crow and Barnett versus the former tag champions, Kalisto and Lince Dorado for the tag titles on NXT. This is one of I think this is the only NXT match, actually. Uh, regardless, they are handing over their titles to the referee. Their first tag title defense in NXT. So let's go ahead and get this match underway. Kalisto starting out, as well as Barnett starting out. The bell rings, and instantly into a locked position, but no, Kalisto has no match against Barnett. In that regard, slam down, uh, backbreaker, several backbreakers from Barnett. Barnett obviously being the bigger man here, ducked out of the way and a super kick to the gut of Barnett. He went for an enziguri and knocked himself out. And another clash of strength between Barnett and Kalisto. Kalisto rolling neckbreaker. And now Kalisto has the upper hand here in this matchup. <laughs> a roundhouse kick to the lower leg of Barnett. Barnett with a big slam into the center of the ring. Kalisto being able to get out of it. Puts him in a headlock. Now Barnett trying to get out of it against the ropes. Pushes Kalisto. Kalisto bounces off. And it turns into a German suplex somehow. We spun around at the last second. Oh. That's a devastating knee to the side of the head of Kalisto. Kalisto could be... Kalisto could have a concussion from that. Barnett's knee is not a very small knee. Ooh, takedown from Crow instantly into a submission. Is he going to be able to submit the cruiserweight? No. Kalisto manages to get out of it. Kalisto with a kick to the gut. And he's going for the front foot powerbomb, which does connect. Picking him back up to his feet. Trying to take out the big man that is Crow. Crow having a uh, feud with uh, the Undisputed Era. I'm surprised that the Undisputed Era hasn't come out and tried meddling with any of their matches, especially the title matches. Now Crow being targeted by Lince Dorado, who is now the one that has been tagged in. He goes for a kick, is caught by Crow. Crow picks him up for a single arm spine buster. He seems to have hit every rope on the way down. And he manages a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. He tags in Barnett. Barnett still having not been hit hardly at all this matchup. Leaning up, Lince Dorado on the ropes picks him up. And just slams him against the ropes. And he goes for a pin out of that. One kick out of one. And just two kick out at one. Some elbows to the top of Lince Dorado's head. Let's say going for a hot tag. Manages to tag in Kalisto. Let's say Dorado now knocked out. Kalisto with a single leg drop kick takes out Barnett. And a kick to the spinal column of Barnett. And a knee drop to it as well. Kalisto all fired up here. Kick to the gut, and another front flip powerbomb. Or is that a sunset? I think that's a sunset flip. I think that's what it's called. I'll start calling it that, the sunset flip. Hurricane Rana from Kalisto takes down Barnett once again. And a roll up into a roundhouse kick by Kalisto. Kalisto goes for the pin. That was the signature. One. Two. Oh, not even a two count. Barnett already back up to his feet. And he manages to pull off another, holy hell, German suplex. Kalisa went for a roundhouse kick, but it's caught by Barnett. Barnett with another slam. Barnett and Crow, two of the biggest men in the WWE, let alone NXT. And they're going up against two small little cruiserweights. 
Double drop kick from Lindsay Dorado. Lays out Barnett. Barnett going for a hot tag. He manages to hit the hot tag. Barnett rolls out of the ring. Knocked out and a big boot from Crow to knock out Lindsay Dorado. Crow going up top. What's he doing up here? Oh, shit. He manages a spinning splash. And he picks him up for a knee to the skull of Lindsay Dorado. He's got the signature saved up. Is he going to be able to pull off the X-Plex? And he picks up... Nope. He's just dragging Lince Dorado around the ring. Lince with a kip-up. Trying to get back to the corner. He puts Crow in his own corner and sends him over the top rope. Surprised uh, Barnett did not strike him from the other side of the ring. And... Holy shit! Spanish fly! That's a big man to do that to. Slings him against the barricade. And now picking him back up to his feet once again. Went for a mule kick. Caught by Crow. Crow went for a big boot. It's ducked out of the way by Alonso Dorado. Who hits him in the back with a knee. Slamming him down to the floor. And now Alonso in control of this matchup here. Leaning him up against the barricade. No, just slamming him up against the barricade. And now Crow back up to his feet. Throws Lente into the ring post. That's the seven count so far. Picking Lente up again. And runs into the ring. Eight count. No, he's he's not done yet. Ooh. Big flatliner. Onto Lente Dorado. Onto the outside. On the floor. Some concrete. Sent into the steps. Almost. Looks like he just barely missed the bottom step there. And he picks him up into a big flipping stunner. Flipping stunner from Crow. That is his signature. He's got the finisher saved up. Is he going to pull out the DDT? Is he going to pull out the uh, suplex? And he... Is he going to take a count out here? He's just going to take a count out. Nope. Okay. I believe that was nine. That was just taunting to the crowd. That glove makes his hand look comically small. Spear. A spear from Crow. Flattens the competitor. And let's say could be in trouble here. Again, this is their last shot at the NXT Tag Titles. As this is their rematch clause, if they're not able to get the Tag Titles back, it will just be retained by Crow and Barnett. Are they going to get counted out? Barnett has Lince Dorado in a hold. And that's an 8 count. Lince able to get out of it. No, Crow released it. 10. And it is considered a draw as Crow and Barnett get counted out. All right, welcome to the third to last match of Champion to Champions pay-per-view. Out first, they deleted my entrance again. God damn it. Out first is the Shield, who I believe are floating in the air. Um... <laughs> uh... I guess this entrance isn't meant for um, <laughs> this stadium. <laughs> yep, they're just walking out of the sky. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't mind that. But first out is the Shield, and they will be taking on the likes of the Wyatt family. So Dean Ambrose being the leader of the Shield, surrounded by Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, and they will be taking on. Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. So let's go ahead and bring out the Wyatts. Once we see the uh, shield fist bump, because that's fucking awesome. And this is now the third time I've tried recording this. Or maybe it's the fourth time trying to record this. I think it's the fourth time, actually. And uh, the third day of trying to record this. So... <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't crash again, because I will be pissed and lose my shit. Uh, <laughs> anyways, there is the shield. Let's go ahead and bring out the Y family. And let's get this match 
underway. This is the third to last match, so hopefully it doesn't crash between now and the main event. I imagine it'll crash right before the main event, though, because it crashes before every big match for whatever fucking reason. I hate how shittily put together the game is. Love the game, hate the glitches, and there's the Wyatt family. Probably one of the coolest entrances of all time, the Wyatt family. Unfortunately, it's not very dark for them because it is daytime outside, uh, but nonetheless, let's get into the third to last match. And uh, this isn't for anything, this is just the S.H.I.E.L.D. trying to prove that they are still a dominant faction, despite the fact that they lost their first match <laughs> to Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Chris Jericho, no less. Uh, maybe they'll have to have a rematch. If they stay together, seeing as Kevin Owens is facing Sami Zayn for the United States Championship at uh, Extreme Rules. But regardless, I have actually started booking things up until the next pay-per-view, rather than just, you know, going with the flow and saying, fuck it, I'll just try whatever works. And so now I have everything booked up through Extreme Rules. So now I have a bit more of an idea as to what is going on. Uh, as opposed to just winging it every night and hoping it works. And it seems to be working so far. Um, also later on tonight, the final match, the main event, is every champion facing off against each other, except for the NXT Tag Champions and Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's not going to be part of it. Jeff Hardy is representing the Hardy Boys um, in that fashion. And a big clothesline from Bray Wyatt laying out the leader of the shield, Dean Ambrose. <laughs> he went for a big right hand, but he can't strike it the way Roman Reigns struck him earlier. Dean with a big takedown on Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt being a big person to do that to. And he tags in Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins hasn't really been in any, been in any matches so far. Um, he might have been in one odd match. But uh, Roman Reigns was in a match against Braun Strowman to determine who would face off against Drew McIntyre for the Universal Championship and lost. And uh, Dean Ambrose has had a pretty good run, actually. Um, I believe the only matches he's lost was in the tournament and in a tag match with The Shield, unfortunately for him. so. <laughs> and he has faced the redesign, if you guys didn't see during one of the Raws. And he actually looks like Dean Ambrose now, as opposed to just some bloke in his, uh, somewhat his attire. Now he actually looks legitimately like Dean Ambrose. For what? Trying for a submission, it looked like. And, uh, Seth Rollins gets out of it with two right hooks. That was a planting DDT, and he just popped right up right afterwards into a clothesline. Not selling it at all, right? Or he does not care. Going for another back suplex. No. Picks him up. Ooh. A gut buster. That's gotta hurt. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins does have a uh, military vest on, though. So maybe it doesn't hurt as much. Maybe he's got a little bit of protection there. And uh, Bray trying to get him into the corner. Doesn't connect. Or it doesn't work, I guess. Nothing was connecting at all. But it doesn't work. He does manage to get him into a corner. But it's not the corner he wanted him in. Picks him up and hits him with a snake eyes in the corner. Rollins not looking good. A uh, big uppercut knocked him out. And now Bray has full control. Nope, never mind. Seth Rollins with a backbreaker. And now he's going to go in and tag in Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns not taking hardly any damage at all this match so far. Bray Wyatt taking the brunt of the damage. Neither of his teammates have managed to be tagged in yet. If he can manage to keep only Bray in, then that'll be good for the shield. If Bray manages to tag out, though, that could be a problem, seeing as the other two competitors are fresh. Um, Bray with a arm drag over the, over the back. Not over the top like usual, but over the back. Slings him into the corner. This could be bad for Roman Reigns. He's going to take some damage here as Bray Wyatt tags in. Eric Rowan hits him with a gut kick immediately. And then a suplex. 
And Rowan, like I said a minute ago, is fresh out of the gates. Has not been touched yet in this match. Same with Harper. A few gut shots to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns reverses the gut kick. Hits him with just a shoulder tackle. Not even a clothesline. A shoulder tackle in there. And tags in Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose being the least damaged member of the Shield so far. And Rowan looking to change that. As he picks him up immediately. And slams him back down. Eric Rowan being one of the big men in the uh, Wyatt family. To be fair though, everyone in the Wyatt family is pretty big. And uh, Rowan throwing Dean Ambrose down to the mat. Rowan again being, er, Harper, my bad. Harper being brand new as well. He did manage to get hit once at least, so it's not completely fresh, but Bray Wyatt does have a signature. If they can tag in Bray Wyatt, he could potentially hit uh, his signature and then probably go for the kiss that also begins with K. Uh, <laughs> the kiss that begins with K. No, the uh, Sister Abigail. And Dean Ambrose now getting in some offense on Harper. Throwing him into the corner. Is he going to go for a tag move? It looks like it. He tags in Seth Rollins. Toe drop. Elbow drop. Immediately from Rollins. And Rollins is now hitting him with a double drop kick apparently. I was going to say now getting some offense in. But holy shit that was a big double drop kick. Kicks out the knee. And a super kick to the face. Rollins hits the signature. He goes for the pin. One. Two. Kick out at two. Harper does manage to kick out. He is rather fresh, but he's about the same health now as Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins with the stomp. You've got him. Will he be able to put away Harper? Will it be enough to pin Luke Harper? Or are the others going to get involved? One, two, kick out at two. Barely managed to kick out there. But leg out of the corner of my eye. I think uh, Bray Wyatt was starting to get into the fray. Harper picking it. Rollins up and just planting him down in the corner. He's going for a tag now. He's going to tag in Rowan, the only member left of the Wyatt family that is in green damage. Rowan Reigns getting in to break up the pin, but it's broken up before even a one count. Rollins kicked out. Kick to the back of the spine of Rowan, and now Rowan is writhing on the uh, ring mat. Tagging in Roman. Roman Reigns still being in green health as well. Big right hook from Roman Reigns. And he gets on top of Roman for several strikes of the head. He seems to be targeting the head of each competitor now. Though I guess it does make sense as the Superman punch also targets the head of his opponent. Dean Ambrose now going after Roman. Is he going for Dirty Deeds? He hits a Dirty Deeds on Eric Rowan, and Eric Rowan is going to be forced to tag out, and he's knocked out now. Luke Harper being tagged in. A big running knee from Dean Ambrose knocks out Harper. Harper's neck bending in a way that probably shouldn't have. Goes for a strike. It's countered, and now he's on the ropes. As Harper takes control, and a big stomp to the chest of Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose could be in trouble here as Luke Harper is a pretty big fella. Holy shit, that's a big boot from uh, Luke Harper. He goes for the pin in front of the shield. One, two, three. Oh my god. A big boot took out. Okay. I think that might have been a signature though, so that makes a little bit more sense. But still, I'm surprised shield didn't, you know, just reach out their foot and tap him on the back or something. He was so close to him. He got pinned in front of his allies, and his allies did nothing to break it up. So, uh, that was kind of a lackluster ending to what should have been a phenomenal match. And Dean Ambrose is pinned for the first time on, uh, on Raw. Well, I guess this isn't Raw, but it's a pay-per-view. For the first time since the, uh, tournament, Dean Ambrose is the one to be pinned. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the next matchup on Champion of Champions. And it is the match between Paulo Cruz and Daniel Bryan. 
Let's get into it. And now for the second to last match, the last regular match of the night. It is Daniel Bryan facing off against Apollo Crews in a no disqualification match. I believe, I believe this is no disqualification. Pretty sure. It's either that or a knockout match. One of the two, I can't remember which I picked, but it's one of those two. And I'm not sure why. I guess I forgot to change his entrance. He is still a heel, but I guess he doesn't need the uh, world championship on his um, entrance. Seeing as he doesn't have the world championship. Anyways, that is Daniel Bryan making his way out to the ring. Let's go ahead and bring out Apollo Crews. They have been having a feud since, I believe, Money in the Bank. Actually, before Money in the Bank. There's a battle royal to determine... Uh, I believe the last person in Money in the Bank. And, uh... It was won by Rey Mysterio. But during the match, Apollo Crews and Daniel Bryan went at it pretty good. And I decided to make it a match at Money in the Bank. Which turned out to be probably the best match of the night. Um, apart from the wizardry done by Xavier Woods, Kane, and The Undertaker in, inside the Money in the Bank match. But it was probably the best singles match of the entire night. And uh, ever since then, it's been a feud as Daniel Bryan wasn't too happy at the ending. Even though he did pin Apollo Crews at Money in the Bank, he was still pretty pissed off at Apollo for whatever reason. Because Daniel Bryan is... It's hard to understand what goes on in his mind. But uh, he did attack him after the match. Then obviously in the back rooms they fought and Daniel Bryan knocked out Apollo Crews and Apollo Crews challenged him to a match on Raw which Apollo won so now we're here with Daniel Bryan versus Apollo Crews again big suplex not really big they're both pretty small men uh, but a German suplex from Daniel Bryan and a trapped arm German suplex from Daniel Bryan now Bryan bringing out the uh suplexes early on. Ooh! Jumping clothesline from Apollo Crews and then a kip up. And Apollo with his own suplex, a deadlift suplex. Those suplexes are rather hard to pull off as your opponent is struggling the whole time as opposed to uh, when you do a regular suplex. They're at least a little bit more controlled as opposed to flailing about and having to pick them up straight off the floor. Stomping on Daniel Bryan in the corner. Daniel Bryan goes for a submission. Bryan targeting the head, has him in a headlock. And he powers out of it. Oh, I thought he was gonna slam him in a face buster. But no, he hits him with a double drop kick and he goes for the first weapon of the match. We'll have to see what it is. A kendo stick, of course. But it can be used against him, as Daniel Bryan can put in the yes lock with a kendo stick. Holy shit, immediately busting the head of Daniel Bryan. Not wide open, but he just whacked him. A solid whack to the top of the head. A few right hooks, knocks out Daniel Bryan. Bryan with a kip up. Paula Cruz hasn't seen. Well, now he feels it. Now he sees it as he's pushed back into the ring by Bryan. Brian now in full control of this matchup as it hits him with a back suplex. Back to the suplex, I see. Apollo with a kip up, manages to get out of whatever Brian was going for, hits him with a belly to belly. And now Brian could be. Oh! Jello Man for a second. Brian could be in trouble, but no, he gets out of whatever Apollo Cruz was going for. Cruz gets out of the corner, pushes Brian into the corner. And now he's taking him up top. He's looking for something big here. It looks like he's gonna go for a suplex of some sort. Yep. A back superplex by Apollo Cruz. Plants Daniel Bryan in the center of the ring. Is he gonna go for the pin? He does, he goes for the pin. One, two, kick out at two. Apollo Cruz almost evening up the uh, score a hit from the behind and a big elbow to the top of the head 
And a spinning elbow knocks down Brian. Kick to the shin. He's trying to take down as much of Brian as he possibly can. Trying to... Oh, God. <laughs> that was actually really impressive by Apollo Crews. Stomping on the shoulder of Daniel Bryan. Bryan could be in trouble. And another one. Power clean Samoan drop on Daniel Bryan. Going for a suplex. And he hits it. A stalling suplex at that. Just showing off the power and strength of Apollo Crews. Is he going to go for the pin right afterwards as well? He very well could. He is at the uh, point. He oh! <laughs> Just a stomp on the jaw. Double drop kick lays out Brian again. Brian in trouble here. He's in red body damage now from Apollo Crews. This could go very poorly. Goes for the spinning elbow. Instead is taken down with a single leg takedown from Daniel Bryan. Bryan going for a weapon now. He does have the signature. He's got a chair. I thought he was going for a kendo stick to put in the kendo assisted yes lock. But he does not. Instead of using a chair to destroy the body of Apollo Crews. Still not doing enough damage to really do much to Apollo. Now he's going to target the head, which is already beaten up and bruised a little bit. Slamming him head first into the chair. And he's got him right where he wants him. No, he doesn't. He repositions him instead. And gets him in a head scissors for a few elbow shots to the top of the head. And now a stomp to the face. Rolls him over. He goes for the signature yes lock. Is going to be able to tap out Apollo Crews. Cruz in orange head damage, and he taps out. Daniel Bryan now with two official wins and a knockout for Paul Cruz. And Paul Cruz only one official win, and no knockout behind the stage. And uh, we'll have to see where this quarrel gets these two as we move into the main event of Champion of Champions as we crown the first champion of all of the champions. My money still is on Ryan Trechikov, though I wouldn't put it past uh, one of the other champions to be able to finally topple Ryan Trechikov's streak. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the main event. And now for the main event and the crowning of the first champion of champions in the champion of champions match. First out is the Universal Champion. He defended his championship against The Rock. He took the championship from Drew McIntyre, who faced off against Triple H in a knockout match earlier here tonight, which Triple H knocked him out. A pedigree. A spine Buster and then a pedigree knocked out Drew McIntyre. So McIntyre, as of right now, is not getting a rematch due to Triple H. But... Uh, wouldn't put it past him trying something again to try and uh, get to rematch against Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Braun did successfully defend his title against The Rock, but he had the help of Bray Wyatt with the use of a chair, uh, which disqualified him. But regardless, let's bring out the next champion. And let's see, which champion is this? And that will be Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy being the next champion. He is one half of the current tag champions. Um, they haven't defended their titles quite yet, but they will be defending, the Hardy Boys will be defending their titles against Ivar and Eric uh, as the Viking Raiders in a tag team championship match. Regardless, Jeff Hardy is representing the tag team here tonight uh, in the champion of champions match. Matt Hardy giving him the position after realizing that Jeff Hardy is probably better suited to a six-man match than Matt Hardy is. With his high-flying capabilities and his uh, seemingly infinite tolerance to pain. Um, and so he will be the tag partner that is in this match. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the third champion. 
believe that would be the Miz? No, that is not the Miz. That is far from the Miz. That is Tomasa Champa. Tomasa Champa won in a Fatal 4-Way, I would believe. Where they just kind of... Or maybe it was Fatal 5-Way. They just... Everyone else kind of just stopped and let him pin the... The, uh... Final person. He just kind of pinned him and everyone else watched. Nobody tried stopping him, which was a bit weird. But he has gone on to defend his championship against Ezra Kilklein in a grueling match at the last takeover a few nights ago. And uh, he did retain it, obviously, as he is the champion, the current champion. And he will be defending it against Lee at the next takeover. Ryan has also already uh, enlisted the first person that will, or the next person that will uh, face him for the championship. Provided he still has it at the next takeover. And that will be Gavin Henderson in the main event. A big match for Gavin Henderson and probably the most dominant competitor to face off against Ryan as of yet. Anyway, there is Tomasa Champa. He would probably be my second guess as to who would win this uh, champion of championship champion of champions match. Anyways, let's bring out the next competitor. And it is... Uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't have the music's on, so I don't know who's coming out, but it's not showing up. Oh, it is Ryan, actually. Ryan Trechikov, the current NXT champion, out in his battle gear as he's ready to be tested against all the other champions in this gladiator-style fight. It is the last man to be standing in the middle of the ring that will be crowned the first champion of champions. The last man to pin the second to last man. And he would be my bet to win the first champion of champions title. Which would replace the NXT title. Which, uh, if he does that ever, ever at any point in time lose his uh, NXT championship, which I don't see happening in a very, very near future at all. I don't foresee it happening in a distant future either. Um, it will revert back to the NXT championship if and when he loses it. Next out is The Miz, the current Intercontinental Champion. He defended his title successfully, technically, against AJ Styles on a technicality at Money in the Bank. And then he defended it again the next night at Monday Night Raw. And he defended it legitimately, getting the pin on AJ Styles and kind of screwing Styles out of any other opportunity for the Intercontinental Championship. Holy shit. Hardly uh, spit that out. And he will uh, be facing off against Finn Balor at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view for the Intercontinental Championship. And Finn Balor will be trying to take that off of his hands, off of his waist. And let's go ahead and bring out the next competitor, which should be Kevin Owens, the current United States Champion. And uh, he successfully defended his championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. He will be defending his title at Extreme Rules against Sami Zayn, his own friend because Sami Zayn tried to pull some shenanigans during a match against Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens wasn't impressed. So to bring a message to both of his best friends, Chris Jericho and Sami Zayn, he is going to, and I quote, kick Sami's ass at Extreme Rules. And he said he will put the title on the line, but there's no need to because he will just kick Sammy's ass and there will be no need to uh, even think about there being another champion. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this match underway. I don't believe we have any other competitors to come out. And uh, we will crown the first champion of champions. And let's go ahead and get this match underway as Kevin Owens 
and Ryan take on each other. Jeff Hardy and The Miz take on each other. And Strowman and Tomasa Ciampa take on each other. And Ryan with a faint roundhouse that lands in a spinning heel kick on Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens in trouble right out of the gate. Same with The Miz as he's slung over the top rope. And Strowman being beaten down by Tomasa Ciampa. Kevin Owens really in trouble here. He gets out of it with an elbow strike. Goes for a takedown. Doesn't connect. Ryan with a knee instead. And he picks up Kevin Owens. It's a big man to pick up. I'm going to shift my mic a little bit so if you hear any disturbance in the sound, that is the mic shifting as I am shifting. He goes for a pin. One. He does manage a one count, surprisingly enough. And uh, now he's going for a few strikes at Kevin Owens. Face with uh, his elbow. Champa in trouble as Sherman has gotten the upper hand here. As well as The Miz getting the upper hand on Jeff Hardy. Champa slammed into the stairs. Oh my god! Is Kevin going to tap? Oh, I thought Kevin Owens was going to be tapped out within the first 10 seconds. First 30 seconds, I guess in a little bit longer than 10 seconds. Wouldn't be the first time he tapped somebody out in less than, less than a minute. And immediately with some boxing punches in the uh, corner, Ryan Tretyakov having a history of boxing and several other martial arts. And is slung into the corner. Jeff Hardy looking to put away the Intercontinental Champion. He himself being a former Intercontinental Champion in real life. Ryan sent over the top by Kevin Owens. Champ is still on the outside. Strowman seems to think there's a count out. He stepped into the ring and stepped right back out. And now Kevin is taunting at Ryan. Or towards the crowd. In relation to Ryan. The Miz knocked out on the outside. Champa in trouble with Jeff Hardy. As Jeff Hardy looks to topple the Cruiserweight Champion. Now Strowman looking to topple the Cruiserweight Champion. He's hit from behind by Jeff Hardy and by Ryan. And now Ryan taking on Kevin Owens. Being able to get out of Kevin's grasp that he's had for the latter part of the match. Now Kevin getting back at Ryan. And Kevin getting back into the ring. Wanting nothing to do with Ryan, I believe. Oh, a Miz almost forced to tap again. Kick to the face of Jeff Hardy. And just get out of it. No, Kevin was the one that was almost forced to tap. Kevin slamming the head of Trechikov on the uh, on the outside. Not a pleasant thing for Ryan. Ryan's gonna have to get a reversal. A reversal here. He's super kicked. Laid out on the outside again. Tomasa. Throwing Strowman into the barricade now. Remember, everything is legal. All weapons, everything. There is no disqualification in this match whatsoever. Raking the eyes of Braun Strowman. Package bomb. Package bomb by uh, Kevin Owens. Onto the NXT champion. The boot to the chest. And he picks him up. Ryan could be in trouble here. Gut check from Kevin Owens. Into a running set senton. Miz laid out on the outside. He goes for a pin. Kevin does. One kick out at one. Owens, you have made a mistake. You have angered the unstoppable force. Holy shit. Almost took the head off of Kevin Owens. Spun his head sideways. And now drop kick sends Kevin Owen crashing down to the floor. And now he's going after Tomasa Champa. He reverses Champa. Champa with a chop. Now Ryan slinging him against the ropes. Spinning heel kick almost connects. Big boot from Champa turns Ryan inside out and upside down. He goes for some strikes on the head of the NXT champion. The two of them feuded at Money in the Bank. Champ is hit with a chair out of nowhere. Chair planting DDT. Head first into the chair. 
two count on Jeff Hardy. Strowman now going after Jeff Hardy as Champ is knocked out. Ryan rolls out of the uh, ring. Kevin Short to follow, but he's sent straight back into the ring. Oh, and Jeff Hardy hung up on the ropes. The Miz helping Ryan take on Kevin Owens now. Jeff Hardy, one, two, almost pinned. Oh, is Kevin going to be tapped out? The Miz is an idiot. He could have let Kevin Owens get tapped out right there. Kevin Owens could have been down. He is in orange arm damage. Ryan almost got another tap out. The Miz made a catastrophic mistake by pissing off Ryan. Oh, Ryan hung up on the middle rope. And a right hook from the Miz. He goes for a skull crushing finale. The ref is down. Ryan rolls out of it. Clothesline. And now the Miz is in trouble. As Ryan goes up top. I don't think I've seen him go up top before. Oh boy. Backflip double stomp from Ryan. He goes for the pin. Miz could be out of this. One. Kick out at one? Holy shit. Miz is the Intercontinental Champion. And he did defend against AJ Styles twice. And uh, Champa now sent to the outside as he's knocked out. Strom is knocked out. Kevin Owens is knocked out. And uh, Miz reversed into an arm drag. Jeff Hardy now going after Ryan. Not sure why, but a neck breaker from Hardy. If he stomps. He had no reason to target him. And he goes, oh, he plants him. Is he going to be able to put away the NXT champion? One, two, kick out of two. Ryan is still in this. Kevin Owens spins Jeff Hardy around, picks him up, and slams him down in a small and drop. Strowman hit with an arm drag. That's a big man to arm drag. Kevin Owens with another small and nope. Thought he was gonna go for another small and drop. No, oh, he hits another gut buster into a running senton. Now Ryan attacking Strowman again. Double whammy. And The Miz is taking on Champa. Now Kevin Owens and uh, Ryan working together. Earlier in the match, they were battling it out. Strowman, oh boy. This could be bad for Kevin Owens. Strowman with a big slam on Kevin. And The Miz is eliminated by Tomasa Champa. And Champa goes for a submission on Jeff Hardy. Is he going to be able to tap out Jeff Hardy in the center of the ring? Two eliminations back to back. No. Jeff Hardy manages to get out of it. Strowman tried to break it up for whatever reason. I don't know why everyone's trying to break up everything. Not very smart moves by some of the competitors here. Champa puts Hardy up top. Hardy goes up. Hardy's going to fly. Nope. Strowman decides to attack Tomasa. Hits him with a signature. He's going to go for the pin. Is he going to be able to put away Tomasa Champa? Jeff Hardy up top. Oh, he goes for the pin. Nope. Sometimes he pins like that, so it's hard to tell. Is he going to go for the finish? Ryan back to his feet. Back in the ring. With a finisher ready. An arm takedown by Ryan. A few one one arm push up on Jeff Hardy. Strowman goes for a strike. Not sure why he's going after Ryan when he could continue going after Tomasa Champa. Ryan is clearly preoccupied. Another one arm push up by Ryan, just showing his pure strength. He's going to go for the finish on Kevin Owens. Kevin with a pin. Don't break it up. One, two, three. Strowman is pinned. That would have been my third choice. That would have been my third choice for the winner of this match. My first two choices still in the match currently. Ooh, Muay Thai knee strikes from uh, Ryan. Oh, what's he going for here? Big boot. 
sends Kevin out onto the outside. Champa with a double drop kick. Champa would do well to try and submit him here. He is not able to. He just does some face strikes instead. Ryan back up to his feet. Oh, an E strike blocks the finish. Ryan back up to his feet again. He hits him with a super kick. The signature. He goes for the pin. One, two, three. Champ has been pinned. Champ is out of the runnings. Now Owens hit with a finish. And this could be it for Owens. He goes for a pin. One, two, three. Oh, I thought it was over for Owens. Jeff Hardy reversed by the uh, NXT champion. Who's going to pick to pin? He is happy he's gotten this far. Even though he's undefeated, it is still quite the feat to win a six-man elimination match. Which I still predict he will do. Owens now attacking Ryan. Ryan being attacked by both people. Hardy trying to fly. Doesn't work out as uh, Owens gets out of it. It's a spider running across the ball for whatever fucking reason. Get the hell out of my room. He crawled out the window. All right. Jeff Hardy going up top. Swanton bomb on Kevin Owens. He goes for the pin. Is Kevin down? One, two, three. Owens is pinned. Jeff Hardy's going to have to go wake up Ryan, though. Jeff Hardy does have a finish. It could be over. Both men have a finish. It could be over for either one of them. Trying to attack him while he's down. He's just going to wait for him to wake up. Ryan's struggling to get back up to his knees. Is he going to be able to reverse whatever Jeff Hardy goes for? And get up and take down Jeff Hardy? Ryan up to his feet. Jeff Hardy behind him. Rolls him into the ring. Ryan's already back up to his feet again. Is he going to go for the finish? He goes for a suplex instead. Okay. I think Ryan's safe for now. But Hardy's going to go for a pin. That was stupid. One. Two. Kick out at two. This is bad for Hardy. Ryan has two finishers saved up. And he hits the finish. It's over. Roundhouse. Ryan Trechikov is still undefeated. One, two, three. He is the first champion of champions. That was one hell of a match. I am shocked and appalled that Ryan was able to pull off a win. I would have been shocked by any winner. But holy shit, Ryan manages to pull out the win. He's almost been pinned several times in the course of the matchup. He took out, I believe, Tomasa Champa and Jeff Hardy. Um, almost tapped out Kevin Owens in the very beginning. And that could be one of the best matches we've had so far. And now Ryan is the champion of champions. Replacing the NXT champion. Thank you guys all very much for watching this pay-per-view, and I'll see you at Raw.